Nothing compares to the feeling of doing what you like and getting paid for it. Few pleasures are as rewarding as helping others while benefiting yourself. No other profession allows the freedom, the fun, and the opportunity for financial independence as sales. In Search of Yes is a step-by-step -step sales learning process that outlines the keys to successful selling and artful negotiation. The five most important steps in selling are the greeting, listening and qualifying, the presentation, handling objections, and closing. The greeting. The greeting is your first contact with the prospect, and it can make the difference in bringing the customer to yes. Here are some do's and don'ts. Don't ignore the prospect or act disinterested. Do acknowledge the prospect, even if you cannot immediately assist him, her, or them. Do smile and offer a handshake. Do get an exchange of names, if possible. Write it down if you're not good with name recall. Don't ask questions that can lead to a no response, such as, hello, can I help you? Do offer an at-home type of greeting, such as, hello, my name is John. May I offer you a cup of coffee or a refreshment? Or break the ice with a reply statement like, great weather today, don't you think? If the prospect has a sports hat on, comment about the team, etc. Let's take a look at a typical greeting in action. Hello. Hi. My name's Larry. What brings you in the store today? Oh, we're interested in spas. Great. We have an excellent selection of Vita Spa models here to choose from. Have you owned a spa before? Well, no, we really haven't, but we just got back from vacation and the resort we stayed at there had a spa right outside our room, and we loved it so much, we thought we'd come in and check them out. Sounds nice. Where'd you vacation? We had a great time. We went skiing in Colorado. Wow. Colorado's a beautiful place. Sure is. I have a sister that lives there. I apologize. I told you my name, but I forgot to ask yours. Oh, that's May I ask right. your name? Yeah, my name is Jim. This is my wife, Sarah. Jim? Sarah? Pleasure to meet you. You too. Could you see how the warmth and friendliness of the greeting helped the prospect to open up? Creating trust and confidence is vital. Once the prospect knows that your goal is to fulfill their needs, you'll become their personal consultant. Types of prospects. Few sales professionals have the ability to size up, analyze, and identify a customer's value. The fact that they are in the store means they are interested. Your job will be to make the most efficient use of the time spent with them. The fleeing prospect is always in a hurry and seems to have no time to spend. If you push too hard, you can lose them. Perhaps scheduling a private consultation would be best for this type of prospect. The preoccupied prospect's mind is on something else. They are not paying attention. You may have to confirm real interest level or ask for a special presentation appointment. The exhausted prospect. Think how you feel if you're tired and not really too interested in hearing about something. If you cannot arouse interest in something special or unique, you will not succeed with this prospect. The silent prospect does not say much. Don't try to get too conversational. Use tie-downs and small point confirmations to gain knowledge. You can lead them to a rational yes decision. With the methodical prospect, you'll need to follow all the sales steps. They'll want answers to all their questions. They'll expect that you're very knowledgeable about the product and that you'll act as their personal consultant. The impulse prospect doesn't care too much about details. They tend to make decisions based on what they want, not what they need. The know-it-all prospect knows more about everything than you, including your company, your product, your competition. Don't argue or criticize this prospect. Ask them what they think. Build their ego. Let them come to their own logical decision. The lying prospect will seldom give you their real objections. An excellent close is the is it me close that we'll discuss later. The ideal customer profile. You can never know too much about your prospect. The more you learn, the more there is to learn. Each spa might have two to three different profiles that are likely to purchase. As an example, if you sell a lot of Quest spas to small families or those on a limited budget, then it's safe to assume that the next four-person family that meets that profile might also be interested in the same spa or something similar. That same spa could fit a first-time buyer that typically wants to buy a spa with a lounge. An empty nester or dink profile that does not entertain might be a good prospect for a Jolie or a Bijou. 
Ideal customer profiles are not perfect, but they are helpful. Here are some important variables in developing ideal customer profiles. The size and shape of people. Their investment budget. Finding out how the spa will be used. Have they used spas before? What is their main reason for interest? How did they hear about Vita Spa or the dealership? Listening and qualifying. The process is exactly what it says, in that order of priority. In order to properly guide the customer to yes, there are certain things you must learn. You can do this only through questions and listening to the replies. The most successful salespeople listen 75% of the time and speak only 25% of the time. The keys to listening are to listen for important points, to hear clearly what is being said, and to speak in simple, non-jargon terms to the prospect, to understand the message the prospect is conveying, and to understand that no does not always mean no, to verify to the prospect that you are paying attention. This is done through confirmations back to the prospect. Questions are the lifeblood of a salesperson. Develop rapport. Remember, people buy from people they trust. You must lead, not push. This is done through the type of questions you ask. Questioning. There are two types of questions. Open-ended, which require a narrative for an answer, and closed-ended, which allow for a quick response, usually a yes or a no. Your questions can be direct or indirect, which may conceal the real question in favor of prolonging dialogue and information gathering. Both open-ended and closed-ended questions can be effective, but open-ended questions are better in leading the customer. They typically start with words such as who, what, where, when, why, or how. Here are some examples. Who will be using the spa most often? Where will you be installing your spa? What other brands are you considering? When will you be ready to take delivery on a new spa? How are you planning to pay for the spa? By using our 90-day no interest, no payment program? Or would you prefer paying in cash? Please note that this last example is a multiple choice question. Additional tools. Use multiple choice questions. Please allow me to confirm. You indicated a preference for blue, but I know that we currently have only a green one. Would you prefer getting your choice in colors or taking advantage of what we have immediately available? Use tie-down words such as, aren't they, don't we, isn't it, don't you agree, and so forth. Let's see some listening and qualifying in action. Jim, I find that I can help you better if I know and understand how you plan to use your spa and where you plan to locate it. Would you mind if I started by asking you a few questions? Well, I really just stopped by and don't have a lot of time, but, you know, sure. I can appreciate that. But let me ask you a couple of questions so that the next time you're in, I'll better understand your needs. Okay, but I only have about 10 minutes, Larry. I understand. Have you been looking at spas for a while? Well, not really. I've thought about it, but I'm really just trying to get an idea about, you know, what's out there and available. Great. You know, today's spas, they offer a wide variety of features and benefits, such as therapy, entertainment, and relaxation. What's your main reason for investing in a spa? Well, actually, I think it would be a great way to, you know, unwind, take some of the stress out of my busy schedule. Man, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Many of our customers have invested in spas for that very same reason. How soon would you expect to invest in a spa? Within the next 30 days. Great. Have you considered who'll be using the spa? Well, you know, my friends are certainly going to love it, but mostly my girlfriend and me. Well, we have several spas that are suitable for two to four people. Have you considered how much you'll invest? Well, you know, the price isn't as important as finding just the right spa, so, you know. Well, you know, Jim, usually when I get a new shopper such as yourself, my goal is to educate them on what's available. Right. However, this usually requires about 30 to 40 minutes. Can you give me that much time? Sure, I guess so. The presentation. This is your moment on stage. Selling is the customizing of your story to the wants and needs of the prospect. You need to be naturally conversational, honest, sincere, and above all, focused on benefiting the prospect. You must be able to arouse interest in the product through the introduction of value and benefit. Have full product knowledge. Know your competition. 
be able to utilize your experience to your advantage. Be a showman. Don't be phony, but show enthusiasm and belief. Emphasize the positive and eliminate the negative. Magnify savings and advantages while shrinking the expenses and any possible disadvantages. Tell the bad news first. It'll aid in handling objections. Don't discard your planned story. If you believe you're guiding the prospect in the right direction, thereby serving their best interest, you should come back to your beliefs. Don't rush. Work hard to establish respect and rapport. It'll result in trust, which in turn gives you the right to consult. Ask permission and summarize frequently. Make sure you let the prospect know that you want their business. Make your presentation appear customized. Let's take a look at a presentation. This brief presentation segment demonstrates how to talk about your company and use the confidence you have in your product as an excellent way to start a presentation. You know, a lot of people comment on the beautiful styling of our spas. And we sell spas all over the world, actually in right about 40 different countries right now. And a lot of our styling ideas come from Europe. They really have a European flavor, don't you think? I think so. I sure do. They're on to something. You'll also notice that Vita Spa gives you more space inside their spas than most manufacturers. Look at how wide open the seating and footwell area are. Unconfined space is very important to the comfort of a spa. Now you said you were looking for a spa that would seat six people and offer you excellent hydrotherapy. Right. The cabaret certainly does that. Plus, it offers you the comfort that can only come from a well-designed spa. I think the cabaret would be a perfect choice for you and your family. What do you think? Notice how the salesman used tie-down questions and confirmed what he learned in the questioning phase. Well, I really like it. <laughs> you know, I really didn't realize all the little things that go into a spa, and I really like this model a lot. It seems like they thought of everything. Do you have a color preference? Well, hmm. I like several of the colors, but I think I really prefer the blue. Well, do you have any more questions about any of the things that I've covered so far? No, it sounds good. I'll let her pick the color. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Well, now that I've covered the parts of the spa that you can see, let me tell you about all the features we have under the hood. Okay. Notice that throughout, the salesman controlled the pace and the direction of the presentation. Handling concerns and objections. Many professional salespeople love the word no because it provides them the opportunity to enter the closing zone. The most important thing about handling objections is understanding the difference between a concern and an objection. In either case, you must first acknowledge the concern or objection. Concerns have to be dealt with. Objections may be nothing more than part of the negotiating process. A guideline to handling concerns or objections is to listen. Repeat the concern or objection. If the prospect offers a concern, such as they don't have enough money, be prepared to offer an alternative, such as a means of financing in the form of a palatable monthly payment or possibly a different spa, perhaps one with similar features but more in line with the prospect's budget. If an objection, use questions to uproot the real objection. Examples of typical concerns might be no need, no trust or confidence, no interest, no hurry, no ability to pay. Typical objections might be, I need to talk it over. I want to check size or location. I need to check on power. I want to think about it. I think it's too expensive. For instance, if the prospect tells you they had a friend who owned a spa and that they had a lot of problems getting service, you should acknowledge the objection. Ask more about the failure of the product and what they fear. Express concern and lead them to a positive decision. Mr. Jones, knowing what your friend experienced, I would be cautious as well. However, if you'll allow me, I'll explain why I believe we can overcome that concern. First of all, I'll share with you a list of my personal referrals, including Mr. and Mrs. Roberts that live on the same street as you. Perhaps you know that our company, Leisure Living, is family owned and has been in business for 35 years. We're very active in the community, Chamber of Commerce, Better Business Bureau, as well as other community organizations. 
Our business is built on satisfied customers, and that is why we sell Vita Spa. Because during our vendor research, we found them to have an excellent reputation. The customer may respond with, yes, but our friend's warranty expired after one year and they had to start paying for parts and service. By continuing to dialogue, you perhaps uncovered the customer's real objection, the warranty and the fact that they would have to pay for parts after one year. This would be your perfect opportunity to tell them about the Vita Spa warranty, which is the best in the industry, and follow by a trial close. Resist the temptation to back off from a concern. Assist the prospect to a positive decision based on their needs. Persist in letting the customer know you care and that you want to help. Let's take a look at some objection handling in action. I want to think it over, Larry. I can understand that you want to give it some additional thought, but can you tell me what it is that you may be uncertain about? Well, not really. I just, you know, want to think about it. Fair enough. Buying a spa is a sizable investment. Yeah. So I can certainly understand why you'd want to make sure. Just for my own satisfaction of knowing that I did a proper job of outlining all the features and benefits, could you answer a couple questions for me? Well, sure. No problem. Well, Jimmy indicated that the Essence model had great features and was really the perfect size for your family. Is that correct? Big time. I love it. <laughs> and from what I understand, it's also within your price range. Isn't that correct? Well, yeah. I think the price is very fair. Well, it seems the product is a great fit for you and your family. Yeah. Did I miss something or <laughs> did I do something wrong? Well, I don't know. I just don't, you know, like making decisions like this without consulting with my wife first. Well, I can certainly understand that. Let's go ahead and make an appointment to have your whole family come in and see the spa. Maybe even come in and take a wet test. Would that be okay? I think that'd be great. The close. Closing is how you earn your living. Nothing happens until the close is made. The world's best product or the best customer service won't do it. You have to do it. Closing is the logical conclusion to the entire process. Nothing magical. You're simply asking the prospect to come to a positive yes decision. In order to have confidence at closing, you must have confidence in your company, your product, and yourself. Here are the do's and don'ts of closing. Don't lie. Don't be indecisive or nervous. Be natural. Don't change. Do close from the beginning. Do confirm that the product meets the prospect's wants and needs. Do keep on track. Use the trial close. Do work on customers' hot buttons. Do ask for the order. Here are eight common and often used closes. You should familiarize yourself with each one. The repetitive close. Using tie-downs, continue to confirm the customer's needs. Mr. Jones, you did agree that the Essence model meets your needs and your budget, didn't you? And based on your timetable, it would make sense to choose to take advantage of one of our in-stock Essence models, don't you agree? The eye close, or feel, felt, found. Mr. Jones, I understand your concern about the cost of operation. Most first-time spa owners have similar concerns. However, I believe you'll find, as many of our customers have, that the operational cost, considering the benefit you'll gain, is really quite reasonable. The average cost for the model you're looking at is less than $20 a month, which would equate to less than 65 cents a day. Wouldn't you agree that it's a small price to pay for the fun and health benefits you and your family will enjoy? The testimonial close. Mr. Jones, last week I sold a spa to Mr. Scott on Willow Road. I don't know if you know him, but he and his family are so happy with their new Vita Spa that he told me I could feel free to offer his name as a satisfied customer referral. In fact, Mr. Jones, I have a long referral list. I'd be glad to allow you to call any of my customers to learn about their Vita Spa experience. The Assumptive Close. Mr. Jones, I know that you're interested in our Romance Model Spa. I'd like to confirm a few things, such as color and the best time for you to take delivery. Is it better to take delivery in the afternoon or the morning hours? The Ben Franklin Close, also called the Comparative Close. The customer expresses multiple objections. On a piece of paper, make a list of all the reasons why the product would be good for them. Feel free to help them develop the list. 
then ask the customer to itemize all the reasons why he or she should not consider the spa. With your help, the list in favor of the purchase should be heavily weighted. The what if close. Mr. Jones, you indicated that you favored our essence model and that you preferred the blue color. If I could get that delivered to you in time for your Saturday night party, would you be willing to give me your order? The is it me close. Mr. Jones, you've told me that the Essence Model Spa is perfect for your needs and we have the color you want in stock. However, you seem hesitant to say yes. I'm concerned. Is it me or is there some other issue that we've failed to cover? Unless you fail to establish trust and rapport, the prospect will not blame you, but they will likely tell the real reason. The Emergency Close Mr. Jones, you indicated that you'd like the Essence model, but that you'd prefer holding off for two months. I'd like to remind you that the price I gave included the special factory rebate promotion, which expires on Friday. If you'd give me a small down payment of $200, we'll write the order as of today's date, which will allow you to get the $250 rebate. If for some reason you decide against the purchase, we'll gladly refund your deposit. Don't you agree that it would be wise to take advantage of the special? Now, let's see some closes in action. Sarah, as I understand it, you really like the benefits of Vitaroma. Is that correct? Yes, I do like that feature. You also mentioned that energy efficiency was very important to you. Isn't that correct also? Yes, it's probably my biggest concern. You know, I have heard horror stories about how expensive hot tubs are to operate. Well, if you recall, Vita spas are fully insulated to ensure that we keep the cold weather out while creating an insulating blanket around the spa shell and plumbing. Even greater is our exclusive high efficiency energy transfer system. The system converts heat from our filtration pump and transfers it right back into the spa water. It actually heats while it cleans. You know, we call it free heat. It's a great idea, don't you think? <laughs> yes, that is innovative, yeah. Now, the spa also comes with a two pound density tapered cover. It's going to lock out the cold and its tapered design will help rain and snow from accumulating on the top. And really, Sarah, you said that the Vita Spa was the most comfortable spa you've sat in. Isn't that correct? Yes, it honestly is, yes. Well, for heaven's sakes, with all those positive reasons for choosing Vita Spa, including our special financing program, don't you agree that we should just go ahead and make the investment today? Mm, yes, I do. Jim, you told me that you experienced pain from your feet and back almost daily, isn't that correct? Yeah, I really do. Well, I believe I've told you about the benefits of spa ownership and how it elim helps to eliminate such pain, didn't I? Yes, but you know, I'm not really sure, Larry. You're trying to sell me a spa here, so I'm sure you'd say that. Well, Jim, I take great pride in helping people like yourself soothe their aches and pains. And based on what you've told me, investing in this spa will help you do just that. I'd certainly be glad to give you a couple of names for my referral list, or if you prefer, we could set up a wet test. You can come to the store and test whichever models you feel would best fit your needs. Would that help to gain your confidence? Sure would. Great. Let's get all the particulars on color, delivery, and we'll finalize the exact model after the wet test. Agreed? Agreed. We hope that you benefited from this sales training tape as much as we've enjoyed making it. More advanced training skills are available by registering for Vita Spa's 30 Hours of Excellence training course.